Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial about shading. In this tutorial I will shade the character here over three different backgrounds and I will use the technique I invented for my webcomic Pepper and Carrot using a single layer. So we will shade the light and the shadow on a single layer. So before starting the video I wanted to say a big thank you for all the comments and feedback on the previous video. If you haven't seen it, it was a video on how to make this type of flat color map under the line art. So I can show you, you have the line art here, the flat color map and the background. This is just the setup of my file now. So I will shade these three characters at the same time because the steps are the similar one for the three type of ambient. So let's start. I will start at first to show you all the steps detailed on how to replicate my layer stack for shading. So we start with the flat color map here and I need to put it in a layer group. So I'm going here on the little arrow next to the plus in the layer stack. I'm clicking on it and I create a group layer. I'm double clicking on the layer to rename it and I rename it with the name color. Then I drag and drop the flat color map inside the color group. On the top of my flat color map, I will create a new paint layer using the little plus and I will rename this layer shading. So now I have a shading layer over my color map and I will fill this layer with a mid gray. So if you are not familiar with this color selector here on the top left, you can click on it and you will get a palette. If it's not this palette, you can look on this little list here and find the default palette. The default palette has here on the drop down list a mid gray color here, 50%, and you can click on it. But if you don't have this palette, you can also set up the red, green, blue to 128 for the three value. Then you can click on OK and go to the edit menu and fill with foreground color. So now we have a totally perfect mid gray color layer on the top of our color map. And this is important because now we will select a blending mode for this shading layer. So we go to the blending mode list here and we select here on the light end category the hard light layer blending mode. The hard light blending mode is a blending mode that combines two other blending modes. The first one is the screen blending mode when you are over the mid gray here. And for example, if I select this type of bright yellow and I paint, it will be like if I paint with a screen blending mode and I brighten this area. But if I take a dark red under the mid gray, it will react like if I paint with a multiply blending mode. So with this blending mode, I can and brighten and darken at the same time as blending the color. So I really like this blending mode. But I don't want to paint outside the character. So to do that, I need to activate here the little alpha icon. And if I click on it, the layer on the top of the group will get the same transparency as the layer on the bottom. And here it's the color map of our character. So if you want to also have a color selector that has a better preview of where is the mid gray, you can configure it by the icon here on the corner. And here on the color selector, I select the second one because this one has a sort of idea of where is the mid gray value. So I will reset now the transparency to mid gray of the shading layer. So I'm going back here, I'm selecting the 128, 128, 128. Okay, and I'm going to edit fill with foreground color. 
So let's start the shading now. The first step will be to blend all the color palette of our character inside the scene. So I'm selecting a square selection rectangle, something like that. I will zoom out a bit also to get a better overview. And I'm selecting an airbrush and I will just pick color of the background and quickly airbrush my character. Just so now the character belong more to the scene. And I will repeat the process with the other character. So when it's not the night, when it's the daylight, I will try to pick the color of the light. And just a tiny bit also of the shadow here on the bottom of the character. It's just like getting a big gradient just so we have the character that is looking more inside the scene. I'm selecting the last one and the last one has a lot of ambient because the light going through the leaf and so the, the light is very green so I have to also put a lot of green on this and there is a lot of shadow on the foreground so I have also to mimic that a bit. Maybe pick a bit of color of light, like that. On the second part, I will directly try to set up the key light. So the key light will be the main light of our artwork. On the night scene, it's a light coming from above. It's a light very bright, a bit bluish. So I'm selecting this type of blue color and with a hairbrush, because I don't want edge now, I just want soft shadow. I'm just sketching where the color could come from. So here, just a tiny bit on the hammer, here on the belly, here a lot because we have a surface that is almost eating perpendicular to the light source. Same for the finger, same for the stick here, same for this part, maybe a tiny bit here and probably a lot more on the shoes. So this gives an idea of where is the light without a lot of detail. I will do the same for the daylight. Once this is done, we will create a path for the shadow and it will not be uh, like the shadow we already have, but casted shadow. So it's part where the key light can't hit the model. So for that, I will pick a very dark blue color for the night scene maybe darker and I'm painting here I'm painting under the arm also here under the hat For the daylight, I need to select a stronger shadow because uh, between the, the difference between the sunlight 
and the shadow is very big. So I'm trying to select a little bluish shadow just because we suppose that we have a, a blue sky above. This is a bit too strong. Maybe more like that. Yes, like that. So if I want to sample a color of shadow, I can use the control plus alt plus click. And you will see the, the cursor is changing. It looks now like a color picker with a little layer stack on the corner. So I'm clicking here and I'm recovering only the color of the shadow. With this overview of the shading without a lot of detail and with using the airbrush only, I can bring some uh, correction easily on top and still focus on the overall feeling and also still design a complete different shading. For the sunlight character, I will just add a tiny bit more red on the face and on the shadow of the arm because we have a strong light and this light is going through the skin and reveal the color of the blood. So I'm picking also this part of the light and I'm trying also to add here a little boons of light under the nose and to shade a bit more under the hat. So the shading looks a bit better. Uh, I want to add a little bit more saturation on the sort of jewel he has on the belt. Uh, and then I think I will add a bit more casted shadow here and here. And maybe bring just a tiny bit more contrast with darker color here and there. For the one of the forest, uh, I want probably to switch all the U all the, the color to a bit more bluish. So I will select everything and I will call the filter adjust and the color balance. I will go back to default and then I will take here the yellow and just push a little bit to blue. I also want all this effect of uh, light through the foliage. So I will pick with Alt and Control the color of the light here and I will boost it a bit, go a bit to the yellow light and I will start to, to make this pattern of light through the foliage. Maybe a bit more on the hammer here, like that. And I will create just darker shadow on the area that I'm sure they can't receive light. So the character has a bit more of contrast. especially on the boot here.
for the night scene, I'm pretty happy with it. So now we will see how to add some details and some edges to our shading map. So now we have all the color at the right place, and, but all with a, a little bit of wobbly and weak shading. Uh, for example, here we don't have the shadow following the tissue. Uh, we don't have a shading here for the glove. And so we still need to, to create a lot of detail and sometimes it's a bit too blurry. So we need also to change tool. And for this, I will select a uh, brush with a bit of uh, blending of color, this one, the eye wet textured soft part of the Krita default. And I will pick the color of the shadow here with Alt and with also Control and click. So I have this special color picker that will sample just the color of the shadow. And I will redu reduce the opacity to 20%. Uh, by 20%, so 80%. So it's very hard to do things at the same time as explaining in not my language. So, <laughs> And then I can just create more edges. Like here, I will sample now the light here. And because the light here and the light here is the same, I can reuse it. I don't have to co select a special color. Also for this. So I like this brush because there is like a little painterly effect here on the border. It's not 100% clean. And so you can this way do a lot of little detail for your shading and make it a little bit more dynamic and not so wobbly and flat. So I will now do this step over all the character. It will require a little bit of uh, work. And as usual, when I do that, and I probably take 20 minutes for doing that, uh, I will launch a time lapse. So see you in a bit of time.
So that's all for this tutorial. Of course, you can continue to shade and add details, tiny shadow, tiny light here and there, and increase the quality of your artwork this way. Uh, as you can see in my place, it's the night, so I think I think it's a it's a, something beautiful for a tutorial about shading to end like that. And uh, thank you for following. Thank you for your comment and feedback. And see you at the next tutorial. Bye bye.